It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope and the winter of despair. Yes, I am quoting directly from Charles Dickens' great novel, A Tale of Two Cities. No, I am not necessarily describing the difference between London and Paris. I am, however, describing the difference between Donald Trump's presidential campaign and Ron DeSantis' presidential campaign. You wonder what I'm talking about? Hang on, folks. We're going to get into all that in just one second. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative. Step on up to my electronic front porch and let's talk. Now, everybody has been wondering ever since the newest indictment came in from Jack Smith, the special prosecutor out of Washington, D.C., against former President Donald Trump, what kind of effect it would have on his poll numbers. Now, there's still some things yet to be seen. There are some polls that will probably come out later this week. However, we do have an indication of the effect, and it is definitely not what people would like to see happen to Donald Trump. Take a look at this. Here's a headline from the UK Daily Mail just came out today. Exclusive. Trump leads DeSantis by 42 points in new national polls, showing more Republicans are likely to vote for him after the third indictment. And 75% think charges are a, quote, distraction for Biden corruption. Article written by Rob Crilly of the UK Daily Mail. Former President Donald Trump has extended his lead by nine points over Ron DeSantis in a national primary poll, giving him a 42-point advantage despite being charged in a criminal case for the third time last week. The figures in a polling memo for the Trump campaign show his lead uh, of the Republican field by 55 points, while DeSantis has dropped to 13%, down five points since June. What does that look like in a graph or a chart? Well, take a look at this. Again, Donald Trump is leading with 55%, DeSantis at 13, Chris Christie at 5, Vivek Ramaswamy at 4%, and Pence, Scott, and Haley make up a combined 9% between the three of them. How good are things going for Donald Trump, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you what, the former president's in a fairly good mood. Folks, take a listen to a comment that he made at a campaign speech up in New Hampshire just today. There is more enthusiasm today than we ever had in 2016 and 2020. And the reason is because these people are so corrupt and they're so... See what I mean, folks? It seems to be that all of these indictments, everything they have thrown against Donald Trump is having just the opposite effect. It's rallying more people to him. It's rallying more people than he had in 2016, rallying more people than he had in 2020. And in case you think I'm being a bit you know, hyperbolic in my language, take a look at some of the polling data that's come in recently in some of the individual battleground states. We go to Real Clear Politics, they have done some polling, or I should say they have put up some polling from various places. Here's Arizona. A poll just dropped today from Emerson Research. It was run between August the 2nd and August the 4th. In Arizona, Donald Trump, 58%. Ron DeSantis, 11 That's a 47-point lead, folks. And lest you think Arizona would be the only place where this something like this is happening, take a look at this. Again, from Real Clear Politics. New York Times Siena poll ran from July 28th to August the 1st. Trump, 44%. DeSantis, 20. That's a 24-point lead. And if you take the average of all the polls, Trump's leading in Iowa by 27%. In Michigan, 
New poll just came out again from Emerson. Trump, 61%. DeSantis, 13 That's a 48-point lead, folks. And the coup de grace, I saved this one for last, New Hampshire. Take a look at this headline from Breitbart. Intense Trump loyalty. Most New Hampshire GOP voters would vote for Trump even if he were in prison on Election Day. Headline uh, from Hannah Blue, article reads, Former President Donald Trump sees intense loyalty from Republican voters in New Hampshire in the wake of seemingly constant indictments, as most say they would vote for him even if he were in prison on Election Day, a recent New Hampshire Journal coefficient poll found. And that poll reads as follows. How loyal are voters in New Hampshire? In an exclusive New Hampshire Journal coefficient poll, 62% of GOP primary voters said they would vote to make Trump president even if he were convicted of a felony. In a further display of resolve, 57% said they would vote to send Trump back to the White House even if he were, quote, serving time in prison on election day. Trump has consistently led in both national and New Hampshire polls since his first criminal indictment by Manhattan's progressive prosecutor Alvin Bragg in April. And while Trump's top line number has softened a bit since the last New Hampshire Journal poll in mid-June, his margin over the rest of the field is as large as ever. Trump had the support of 43% of New Hampshire GOP primary voters, while Ron DeSantis and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie were tied in second place at 9%. Which, by the way, folks, that was predicted a while ago, that New Ham- that Ron DeSantis' numbers would continue to drop to the point where one of the other people behind him would catch him and possibly put him in the third place, which is definitely not, not what Ron DeSantis needs to have happen. So that's Trump. He's having a lot of fun these days in spite of all of his legal troubles. How are things going for DeSantis? Eh, Well, to borrow a line from that old Torch song, he got it bad and that ain't good. And to tell you just how bad he's got it, take a look at this. This is an article from The Messenger. Ron DeSantis replaces campaign manager with Florida chief of staff as he, quote, reloads. This is an article from Just Today. In his third staff shakeup in less than a month, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis replaced his embattled presidential campaign manager with one of his most trusted and most conservative advisors, his gubernatorial office's chief of staff, James Uthmeyer. Outgoing campaign manager Gernera Peck will remain as chief strategist on the campaign as part of the restructuring. Peck guided DeSantis's blowout re-election bid last year but she quickly became the subject of criticism from DeSantis advisors and donors in mid-July after his presidential campaign stalled and money dried up. Now, as if a campaign shakeup weren't bad enough, poll numbers are bad, you've just shaken up your campaign staff because of the poll numbers, and now you've got even more money problems than what was being publicly reported. Take a look at this. This is an article from Breitbart that references an article from the New York Times, but it's very important to read. DeSantis fundraising figures for primary season millions of dollars off after a campaign mistake. While the DeSantis campaign has faced criticism over his lack of small dollar donors, it now appears the campaign is not as financially secure as initially reported. Coming into July, the DeSantis campaign reported $9.2 million in available cash for primary purposes. However, according to a report from the New York Times, the DeSantis campaign received a letter from the Federal Election Commission revealing that the campaign mistakenly marked $2.6 million in donations for the primary election. In reality, those funds can only be used for the general election. As a result, Available cash for the primary actually amounted to around $6.6 million, although the Times noted that, quote, a campaign aide said some money could be reallocated and still be used for the primary. So your poll numbers are down. You have cash problems. You've now had to shake up your staff. And as if all that weren't bad enough, 
DeSantis now has a major gaffe on his hands related to one of the biggest issues that's driving Republican voters right now. Take a listen to this. This is an interview that was done with NBC News. And I'm going to play this in its entirety. I'm not going to chop it in any way, shape, or form. So the reporter gets on the subject of the 2020 election. Folks, take a listen to this exchange. So you recently said the election is what it is. You said all those theories that were put out did not prove to be true. So can we just put this to bed so you don't have to be asked about this a million more times? Yes or no, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Whoever puts their hand on the Bible on January 20th every four years uh, is the winner. Okay, but respectfully, you did not clearly answer that question. And if you can't give a yes or no because, on whether or not Trump lost, then how well, can you... Of course, you, no, of, of course he lost. Uh, Trump lost the 2020 of, election. Of course. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden's the president. But the... Oh, boy. You know, you'd think someone like Ron DeSantis, who's supposed to be as schooled as he is in how to talk to the press, could actually give a better answer than what he did. And, and I will give NBC reporter Dasha Burns credit here. She asked him a straight yes or no question. DeSantis tried to be cute, too cute by a half. And in doing so, if he had any hope, with trying to get into the good graces of GOP primary voters, he just shot that all to thunder by basically saying, nah, Donald Trump lost. The election was okay. Now, he goes on to clarify that there were problems in the election, but that soundbite is what everybody's going to hear inside the GOP primary field. Voters are going to hear that and go, mm, that's it for me. So... You've had to shake up your campaign staff. Your poll numbers stink. You've got money problems. You now have a major gaffe over one of the biggest issues that's driving Republican voters right now. It sort of begs the question, is there going to be a point where Ron DeSantis gets out of this thing? Well, it's a question that's asked by a lot of people, but most recently by two people I tend to listen to a lot on all things campaigns and elections. Rich Barris and Robert Barnes. They had a live stream on Monday. Listen to this exchange because, man, it's just kind of sad when you hear what's said. Um, and they're abandoning him in mass. I mean, when Rupert Murdoch recruits you and then dumps you a month yeah. into the race, That's right. you, you're finished. I mean, the uh, I, I mean, now what are the chances he does opt out? step back from the the precipice or is his ego so big that yeah. he'll convince himself he can march on so i i don't know if you saw that the quote i put up from a donor who was venting to me and this is a donor who's been with uh the santis for a while and gave has given a lot of money and let me just use the i'll use the pronoun they because if i say which one it is they might give it away to them but uh they said he's not going to quit that him and his wife are borderline delusional at this point. And that it, it, all he listens to is Casey. He's becoming like increasingly, what's the word? Uh, uh, you know, I, agitated. I bet this... It's starting to, he's melting down. This is what happens with candidates. And only it's sometimes they really go off folks like a bomb. And... Oh, man. You know, if what Barris is saying is true, then it's worse than I thought. It's worse than a lot of people thought. I've said for weeks now, Ron DeSantis is letting his ambition override his common sense. The best thing DeSantis could do at this point in the face of everything that's going wrong for his campaign is just find a way to bow out of this thing graciously in the next few weeks. But if he's as dug in as what's being reported by donors who are talking to him and to Casey DeSantis, his wife, then not only is Ron DeSantis going to lose this primary to Donald Trump in a very bad way, he's going to damage himself for 2028 and beyond. He's going to be the next Ted Cruz or Mike Pence of the Republican Party. Oh, he might 
maybe someday win a Senate seat. Maybe he goes back to Congress. Who knows? Maybe somewhere down the line he gets a cabinet appointment. But he'll never be president. Ron DeSantis will never see the Oval Office unless he's coming in for a visit or a guided tour. That's how bad it's going to get. It was the season of wisdom. It was the season of foolishness. And Ron DeSantis is definitely enjoying a season of foolishness. But that's what I think about it. What do you think? As we start to wrap up this video, please do me some favors as always. Number one, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please do so. Number two, please leave a comment below. You wouldn't believe how much that helps a new creator like me. Number three, please share the video around. I'll take all the advertising help that I can get. Number four, hit the bell for notifications. I want to make sure you're always aware when new material is coming out. And number five, please give me a thumbs up on this video. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative, and I'll see you next time.